everyone happy wednesday and welcome back to another adobe live here in the uk on behance.net slash adobe live or at least that's where you should be if you want to get involved in the chat and all the action you can watch on youtube but behance.net slash adobe live is where you want to be to speak to me tony harmer and also my amazing guest who is today none less than rachel castella hello rachel how are you doing hi tony i'm good thanks how are you yeah it's all good here i think we're doing okay i hope it's nice is it nice and warm where you are you're in innsbruck right i am in innsbruck um we are expecting rain in the afternoon uh, right oh. now it's really warm and sunny <laughs> mm. so i have the windows open to let some fresh air in Yes, it's warm and sunny here too. Very, very warm. <laughs> there you are. But there you are. Okay, so we have the most fabulous. We'll find out a bit more about you uh, in a second, Rachel, and what you'll be doing with us today. But first of all, we ought to say hi to our community because we have the best community here. I think hands down in the whole world. Some of the people who join us here have come along since day one and they just turn up for every stream, which is amazing. But uh, let's say hi to some of them. Kirsty was first into the chat today. Hi, Kirsty. Good to see you. <laughs> and Etoile and Sean and Oliver uh, and Jan and Stuart uh, and Sandrine. Is there? Hi, Sandrine. Sandrine's excited for the skateboardy stuff. There you go. Sarah's here as well. Fantastic. Some guy called Tim. Angus McKenzie. Hi, Angus. Thanks for the lovely messages last week. Excellent stuff. And Mike's here too. Jackie is here. Jackie Mulgar. Fantastic. Really, really good. And there we go. So that's hi to all of those lovely people who, of course, will uh, drop us things into the chat that I'll deal with for you. And Rachel, tell us, please, what... Uh, well, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and then what you're going to be doing today, I guess, is the best way to approach it. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so a little bit about myself. I am originally from El Salvador. I moved here six years ago. And ex almost exactly six years ago, I picked up skateboarding. Tomorrow is my skateversary, <laughs> what I like to call it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's the day that I picked up my first skateboard. Um, and yeah. So I think to kind of commemorate that day, we're going to be doing a skateboarding related illustration today. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like it. El Salvador to me has always sounded lovely. It a is. Fabulous place. Yeah, it always sounds, <laughs> it is. sounds really nice. El Salvador sounds just so good. <laughs> so really good. Yeah, and you speak it's... wonderful English, presumably German as well, wonderfully, and Spanish. Fantastic. We love that. We love the whole multilinguality uh, thing here. So, excellent. So, we'll find out, I guess, more nuggets about you as we go on. But shall we yeah. dive in? Do you want to show any work first? or Because um, I love your behance. It's really cool. We can or your Instagram, a, we could do either. Um, as you wish, we can look at my behance or my Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, whichever whichever is is best for you. Let's let's go with <laughs> what you've got to hand. I think which is Instagram right now. Okay, right? yeah, yeah. I've got my Instagram account open right now. Yeah. Um, as you see, I am promoting <laughs> <laughs> my most recent children's book, uh, which I also uh, authored. I am very very happy. Oh, wow! Um, that it's finally out. It's a project that I started um yeah six years ago also, um, but it's. Uh, I finally have it in my hands and I'm very, very happy about it, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, wow. What an accomplishment. Well done. That's brilliant. Thanks. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I have some other stuff here, book projects, um, yeah. some exhibition stuff. Yeah. On the uh, um, Is the ocelot like a revered cat in El Salvador? Because, I mean, like in Mexico, it's the jaguar, right? Yeah, I yeah. think in many of the pre-Columbian uh, cultures, the jaguar is like the, yeah. the, the main animal. Um, but the ocelot to me is just, I don't know, it just, it's just very special to me. It's like this combination yeah. of a wild cat, but the size of a almost Domestic normal one. cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I always them. thought it was very, very cute. Um, 
Um, yeah, like I think it was two years ago. We were driving back from the beach to the to my house yeah. in the city, and uh, also lot crossed the street. I was so amazed that I actually had the chance to see one live. Wow! Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I know that when uh, when I first looked at your uh, Behance, I saw the cats in there. I thought we're going to get on fire. <laughs> yep. <laughs> big cat fan over here big cat fans yes yeah. absolutely <laughs> definitely i know there's some great anyway continue sorry i was at the same thank you no um, so well, sorry yeah i had a small exhibition opening with a friend a few um, well it was already two months ago okay um yeah this is us <laughs> oh excellent <laughs> very cute yes uh, it was a very very wonderful experience to have an illustration exhibition for the first time, uh, yeah. yeah, we had a lot of fun with my friend Gemma. We really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, and yes, well, there's some pictures of the Bologna exhibition. Uh, one of my books was selected for the Ragazzi Award. It did not win the award, but it was selected. So that's still good to be selected. Yeah, exactly. Still a win. <laughs> still a win. Yeah. And yeah, well, as you see, there's a lot of color in here. I am slightly color obsessed yep. and um, well, a lot of digital illustrations, which is something that we'll be looking into today as well. I really like to mix it up a bit, you know, color texture mm -hmm. so that you have a little bit of the feel of the, um, yeah, yeah. the non-digital stuff. <laughs> yes. No, it's good. We like mix. It's good. Yeah. And a very miserable skate trick that I will not be showing. Oh. Oops, oh really? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh, the Eiffel Tower in there as well. <laughs> Apparently rusting. That's terrible. But <laughs> oh yeah. I oh, know. No, this is this is another uh, picture book cover actually from a past book project from. Oh, I mean already. Yeah. Time flies. Twenty twenty one. Oh, they're yeah. lovely. <laughs> really lovely. I love that. And do we have more skateboarding stuff in here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> One of my hobbies is to paint decks. Mm -hmm. I have a whole bunch of blank decks here from a company oh, nice. called Venom. Yeah. Yeah. And I paint them. It's just a hobby, but they hang up in the studio when they're done. That's so. nice. Yeah. I mean, I did a... Mm. Uh... Um, we're doing some summer workshops again this summer with a grip tape illustration yeah, yeah. and painting. That's going to be really, really fun. I'm really excited about it. Really looking forward to that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And, and is that in Innsbruck? Yeah, we have one uh, in October and another one maybe in Switzerland in September. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> yes. I might turn up. <laughs> <laughs> Please, please join. Yeah, it's going to be very, very fun, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and here's a cat for you, by the way. Oh. You know, <laughs> remembering uh, the lockdowns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. One of my cats. How many cats do you, you have? Cats, right now. You, yeah. You, but okay, how many do you have? I only have one. I and wish one. I had two, but I only yeah. have one. I have two, and they're siblings, yeah. brother and sister. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. But one of the, they're strange. They have these patterns of sleeping in different mm -hmm. places. And it doesn't matter what's there, like there on top of a notebook. You turn around for five minutes, you come back, there's a, there's a cat asleep on top of your sketchbook, and you just think, yeah. Well, I didn't need to do that now anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the else. best thing is when they lie on top of your computer when you're typing. I mean, there's nothing yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's lovely it is lovely <laughs> yeah my cat Hemingway he loves I mean he loves punishing me when I'm not paying attention to him right uh, which means he likes to chew off the paper that I'm working on oh okay it's oh wow not very good <laughs> oh no that's that, that isn't very good no by the way in the chat San, uh, Sandrine is saying yeah. she loves the cat's band shoes Oh, thank you so much. I noticed much. those as a black cats, isn't it? On that's yeah. another hobby. We've got so many hobbies or things in common. I love painting. Do we? I love painting. Yeah, I oh, love yeah. painting sculptures. <laughs> Mainly Converse, to be honest. So mm -hmm. more sort of baseball trainers. But the um, but yeah, yeah, I do have some vans that I paint too. But no, your cats are fantastic. 
Lovely. Thank you. Thank yeah. You, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's a keyboard, there's a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> says Sandra. Totally, totally. And Jackie's chases the mouse cursor on the screen. I think all our cats do that. If they're sat next to you and they see the cursor going on, it's Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. there's also like I think some iPad games for for cats, right? <laughs> I don't know if you've tried that one. <laughs> I haven't. No. <laughs> yeah. they don't. They don't really work with my cat though. Yeah. Um, what I noticed though is um, which one? Which movie is this? Um, about the dragon. Okay. With... <laughs> oh, what? How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hemingway is obsessed with the white dragon. Okay. Which is really funny. I think it looks so much like a cat that he always, yeah. He likes it, know. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to pet it. It's so cute. <laughs> oh. oh. It's really adorable. <laughs> oh, I have a laser pointer for my cats. It's just a little dot going around. Or sometimes my watch when it's sunny. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Are they they hunters then? Yes, they are. Yeah, one the 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 girl more so than the boy. Mm -hmm. um, but because the boy normally sleeps on my legs, he normally curls okay. up and sleeps on my legs. Um, <laughs> she doesn't. She likes to be more aloof mm -hmm. and just go out hunting, and then come back. So, you know, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we better get back to your work. Sorry, we're having a great cat for conversation. <laughs> yeah, when we go to yeah. cats, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I have some, for example, some self-portrait. I don't know if you see the similarity. I don't know if I achieved it. <laughs> Going to try. No? Is no? there? Yeah, yeah, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> A <Yes>. little bit. <laughs> mm. No, I get it. Yep. Yeah, so, yes. yeah. And also, I'm very, very excited. I haven't posted much of this book project yet, but it's coming out uh, in August. It's about a skateboarder. Um, okay. I, I might have a tag here hmm. somewhere. <laughs> if the internet connection works today. Oh, well, you know, that's the internet. It's, uh, <laughs> so this is the oh. little cover reveal for my next book coming out in august Fantastic. and it's all about skateboarding so to keep in topic with today <laughs> yeah and are these available in several languages or are they all in it's in... uh it's going uh it's coming out in english so yeah. it's going to be available in the us in the uk and in australia Fab. Um, but it's shipping internationally and then i think next year it's coming out in spanish and in french and in portuguese which is wow. really, really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a rather international. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll make sure that I buy some later on. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, thanks. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I don't know. No, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Yeah, I did some window painting again this uh, in the spring, which is also very nice. I really love doing that. Yeah. Uh, to be out of the studio and to be out there in the city and have my work uh yeah be seen by many other people did you use glass paint or posca like paint markers it's posca, actually. posca yeah 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 uh, i'm guessing the big x's from the from the size of that i would have thought <laughs> yeah it's i think i don't know if i have some process pictures yet you can see the when you see it at the window, it's not that big, but when you print it out, and I mean, this is like half of my, exactly my half of my studio space, which is like this part here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's the whole window. Then it's big. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's huge. Like when I'm actually, drawing yeah. it, when I'm drawing it, I think like, oh no, it's really small, you know? Uh, like, does it have enough details? Is it interesting enough? And then, um, yeah, then you print it out. I'm like, oh my God, that's like, really really huge really big. <laughs> yeah yeah there and, you go yeah so you see that the window it's not like that much again the it's it's really a funny and really um yeah really weird when you see it in the um when you see it on location i don't know if i have more pictures yeah so the small detail here and filling out the the big sections of the painting they always looks really weird when you look at it from because you're painting backwards yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah 
and you don't yeah it's always when i'm hanging around i'm like is the is the the type set correctly or yeah. should i did i not reflect the image like mirroring the image and you have to like these things you have to write in yeah yeah mirrored. backwards everything yeah. backwards yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's good though because it's it's kind of like cell animation you know when paint it used to paint on them um, on uh on cells mm -hmm. for animation you'd paint backwards in that same way so you kind oh, of okay, start okay. with I didn't know that. highlights and everything which is mm -hmm. very very odd and then you work back to the to the background so it's a very similar approach but once you see it with that tight i mean with glass much more so yeah. but once you've got that bit where the light is being bent around inside yeah. there it just adds a real saturation yeah and density to it that's lovely yeah, yeah totally yeah. it looks so so different when you see it mm. uh, in its final form yeah uh, when you're doing it you're always a little bit nervous thinking oh my god is this even going to look good <laughs> yeah it's not covering right you yeah. think it's not yeah, because, yeah. because of course you're that's the thing when you're painting on glass you're seeing light coming through it mm -hmm. to you, which makes every yeah. mark you make with, yes. with the markers look yeah. like, oh, no, I need to do that more because yeah. it's not, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's not covering it. So you're really, yeah, yeah. yeah it just been there. looks super yeah. messy <laughs> yeah. somehow from the inside. You're like, oh, my God, I don't know. They're going to be thinking I'm not a good <laughs> illustrator. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, the image from the outside, that's what counts. Not <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely. That's what it's there for. You know, yeah. but now you know. Once you know that, and once you become comfortable with that, you you kind of just get on with it, and then you just think, yeah, this is fine. Yeah. It's do. always the first window. Yeah. And then when you have like the the third window, the second window, you're like, okay, yeah. I'm not going to be showing that. <laughs> okay. But I mean, people so, can yeah. look through at their leisure, right? That's the yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, for example, that one had uh, a lot of text. And I was very nervous that I got the text right. No typos. No. Please <laughs> tell me one... that that QR code is pasted in. You didn't actually draw it. I did not. QR I did not draw it. I did yeah, not draw it. Be amazing <laughs> if you had. It would have been uh, a lot of work. No, it would no, have been a lot of work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. <laughs> but I mean, I had to ask, you know, because you never know. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> no, it but... might be that thing where you're showing everybody going, why didn't you ask about the QR code? It took me like three days. <laughs> yeah, know, I, yeah, I did not quote that part. Yeah. 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 You know, just sort of check. <laughs> anyway, no, keep but... on. Yeah. <laughs> I think also, I, I guess a mistake in the QR code would have been um, not very good. Yeah. No, yeah. No, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't honestly expect anybody to do it. But like I said, I had to ask because you never know. I mean, yeah, you'd have to have true. proper skills to do that and make that work. <laughs> but, uh, not that you haven't got proper skills already, but you know what I mean. You'd have to, oh, wow. So, yeah, that's all the three windows together. For Patagonia, no less. Mm -hmm. this... For Patagonia, wow. yeah. yeah. That was a very, very fun commission. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's the second window commission that I did for them. Um, yeah, hopefully a third coming sometime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah really good so we're back at the books yes um yeah i mean we got a little scene project here that i did um trying some risograph printing which is also always a very nice thing to do mm. yeah i'm lucky that i'm studying again in university yeah. and i get to use the risograph machine there oh really <laughs> yes. really we have um we've had uh gabriella marcello on um mm before from mm -hmm. uh risotto in glasgow oh in the how UK. nice yeah yes. yeah i've been there actually have you yes yes i visited it and it was so so nice i wanted to buy everything <laughs> they have a very nice shop yeah she's really good i mean she has a little riso club as well which is mm -hmm. which is nice and so every month members of that club get uh, a little brown envelope yeah. with uh with from a different city with with stuff from a different city every time it's in the mid 50s now i think something like that oh, i think nice. a new one on its way i got a notification that a new one has dispatched nice today so yeah <laughs> yeah yes. so yeah i visited there and i was um uh, yeah i was so amazed by all the beautiful stuff uh they got there and all the 
amazing colors. I think just Riso and the colors, I'm just mm. obsessed with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the, for example, the pink in this illustration, neon pink, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the camera struggles with that, right? I mean, this, this is the thing, yeah. people looking at it, probably, you know, unless you actually see it for real, you don't get quite how vibrant. Yeah. It is because the camera go. The camera has to make a choice on how it's going to present it. It's got like totally. uh, that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tricky. Yeah, totally. I had to actually edit the picture so that it would kind of go yeah. closer to the impression of it. You know, yeah. to how you feel when you see it. Yeah, it's super tricky. <laughs> In real life. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. really really hard. Yeah. I don't know what I got there. I'm not going to show that because it's not loading. But <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair dues. By yeah. the way, you're getting a lot of wows and whatever in the uh, in the oh, chat. Thank I've noticed you. a couple of that, more than a couple of those uh, in there. Lots and lots of uh, cool animals uh, in there. Strangely, <laughs> great color palette. Uh, Sarah Hepworth saying, "I like color." I think that's a, you know, I've got a, I've got a few friends from different parts of South America, Colombia and uh, Mexico mm -hmm, nice. and whatever, and color is a big part. For them culturally it's just a massive thing and i'm guessing it's the same yeah. in in el salvador that yeah. It's, yeah 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 i think um when you move here and to europe everything is like muted and more gray <laughs> which is kind of funny because i think my color palette the way that i use it is also a little bit more muted yeah. but people here like clients here are always like oh maybe can you go down a little bit with the colors because it's they're just too vibrant yeah <laughs> they're too much and i'm like okay but they're already a little bit muted you know <laughs> yeah, yeah i've kind yeah, of yeah. adapted already yeah yeah no it's i love color yeah you can probably I tell mean... by the color of the walls behind <laughs> but, you know, i'm very keen on color it's energizing it's you know yeah totally i mean um my color is here as you see not much <laughs> yeah well i mean the news funny enough i've been working on the new studio that we're moving into uh, over the last few days because we're moving next week mm -hmm. and the week after um and uh it's completely different color in there now we've chosen a different color much much more european much more <laughs> much more muted <laughs> boring yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no definitely when i when i think back to my time in el salvador every time that i go back i'm like just so overwhelmed by by the amount of color and how mm. vibrant everything is i mean the, just the fruit stalls for example yeah. uh all the fruit, the pineapples, the bananas, everything, it's just like so yellowy yellow, you know? Mm. But I think that's i think that's part of the influence, right? Part of the influence is totally. that you're, you're in cultures where you get such fantastic fruits and such rich colors yeah. in them, that that comes across in the way people perceive the world, you know? And also for the richness of, of life, you know, yeah. of, of, uh, uh, that you experience there, you know, the way the communities are, um, yeah, I think it, I think it's 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 that all coming out, and also because the day to day for some some people isn't so great, you know that when yeah. you do fiesta and whatever, then it's it's kind of yeah kind of a chance to to make statements. Yeah, and to let yeah. go a little bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and to live in there right now. Yes, definitely. Yes. Anyway, I guess it's time for us to start some actual work, yeah. I, would, I would have thought. Yes. Really. So <laughs> it's probably a plan. Maybe. Maybe we should start. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I mean, I, so. I hope that we do finish the illustration or, you know, I don't know. Well, you know, it's all right. It's all good. <laughs> we can chat while you work, though. So, well, since we're going to be doing an illustration based mm. on skateboarding, um i'm going to be showing you a little bit of my references um i like to use references when i work on especially on a skateboarding related illustration i'm not a very good skateboarder <laughs> so uh and i also don't know like half of the tricks i see there uh out there and that's why i really do need a reference most of the time um so that i kind of get the trick right when i'm drawing it and um, for example, I like to take images that um, where you can really see the shape of the body really yep. nicely and also to see the shape of the trick. 
um, you know, the forms, for example, this, this board slide, for example, you can really, really see uh, the shape of her body really clearly. Yeah. And that also makes the translation to an illustration a lot easier. So, I mean, that's something that I always try to keep in mind when I'm doing uh, an illustration. What is also really nice, for example, is, uh, and that's also something that I really love about uh, skateboarding, is how skateboarders just use whatever obstacles they find and they use them creatively to, to try and do a new trick, for example. Yeah. And uh, for example, this shape here is very geometric and I really am kind of obsessed with geometric forms of late. <laughs> so this is, I think, uh, a very, very nice, um, well, this is a transition. So that's a very, very nice thing. This, for example, as well, you can also see the shape of her body very nicely, the trick, the, the way the board is uh, placed. Um, so yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of really, really good photographers, skateboarding photographers, a lot of yep. women photographers who are doing a really, really nice job of documenting um, female skateboarding out there. So um, yeah, and I'm going to be sh to show you some of the images that I selected. So we're is it is it an activity where where women are underrepresented? I mean, I know that in the skate parks in London, mm -hmm. they seem to be a fairly decent mix of, mm -hmm, of gender mm -hmm. in there but is I it i think i think it's it's changed a lot i think i was in 2018 i think i was in london yeah uh, for a visit and there was a girls only skate session house of fans which mm -hmm. was a very nice experience to, for me because i was a beginner like a really beginner at the time and i had a very very hard time to go into a skate park that's you know full of boys and yeah, very yeah, intimidating yeah. situation yeah. um but i think mean like in the past maybe three years i think the scene the the, the female scene has grown a lot cool. i mean here in innsbruck it's huge i mean now it's really that you see, sometimes there's more girls than boys skateboarding yeah, yeah. which is really nice well because <laughs> I, I guess at certain times in the year Mm -hmm. When you can't skate, you can board, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's also you know. true. I mean, that's I know, I do, I you know, I do know it's, it's kind of a related skill set. I know mm -hmm. it's not not the same, but you know, it's kind of related. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, in the winter here, uh, a lot of girls. I mean, a lot of people just go snowboarding, mm. and in the summer, it's skateboarding most of the time. So you do have like that fluctuation in the amount of people who you see in the skate park during the winter. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the so, way, uh, yeah. Stuart in the chat is saying he loves these. He used to get Rad Magazine many years ago. Oh, great nice. design, great <laughs> photography. There's an image actually. The, t the image on the top left on your screen right yeah. now, that looks sensational. Yeah, it's from, from this uh, photographer, Raisa. I met her actually this weekend on Saturday. Right, okay. Cool. Yeah, it was uh, a big coincidence and uh, she takes these really really beautiful pictures uh this is an image of uh, ryan evans she's a british skateboarder yeah and uh the image was taken in bilbao and i think it's just so wonderful i mean the, it's incredible the, yeah the, the the sculpture is amazing mm. the picture i mean yeah it's just stunning and so I thought this this might be also a very nice reference. I mean, there's not much <laughs> to add, but um, yeah, I just thought it was really, really nice. And for example, if I, I would sketch this out, mm -hmm. wait a minute, I'm, I'm going to be showing you several sketches. For example, like just to add a little bit of, um, yeah, a little bit more elements to yeah. make maybe the image a little bit more interesting and to add my input because if i only take the image the reference from someone else then it's yeah you know it's not really yeah, yeah. mine so i kind of have to make it mine yeah based off of that image and so and also for example i really like this image um this is the sketch but I also noticed that the shape of her body is not very clear. So it might kind of get lost when I would do the final illustration. Sure. Yeah. So I thought maybe, maybe ditch this sketch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, and also, I really like this. This is a video, actually. I just took a screenshot from it. I also really like this geometric shape. 
and uh, the way she looks on the skateboard and everything her uh, the body shape is i think really translates well into a sketch yeah it's compositionally it's good as well mm. it has a lot going on with the angles that you yeah. can follow the the longest slope on the triangle and the board drops straight yeah. into it as does the leg from the shortest yeah slope in the triangle and then you've got you've got a whole other set of geometries being built in there by this yeah i think that's a that's a great shape yeah so yeah. i thought that was really really nice mm. and maybe add something like that for example you know but then i thought oh, okay maybe maybe it's too much <laughs> yeah. and in the end I went, wait a minute, I think, with this one. So I really, really, really liked this image. Uh, I thought it was so good. I also thought the shape of the uh, just like transition was amazing. Mm. And the trick she's doing, I think it's a sweeper. I'm not sure if it's a sweeper, but um, I thought the shape of her body and everything was just like so good. And mm -hmm. um, so of course, the sketch is not the same because I wanted her leg to be a little bit more visible. Yep. The one that's hiding behind the skateboard. Yep. But you, I think you can still kind of make out what the trick is going to be like. And this was like a, a quick sketch of how, yeah, I mean, how I could add more elements to it. So in the end, I decided that I might be going with this illustration. I love that. <laughs> with this idea. Yes. And so since well, I showed you this, and I'm going to be doing this final illustration in an A3 format. Um, so yeah, again, this is the, this is the, 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 the sketch. But I also cleaned it up a little bit more and added a little bit more, oops, sorry. Um, so you can see this is like the, oops, sorry. This is the cleaner image now. Yeah. And I added a little bit more uh, information on the right corner so that it looks a little bit more balanced with her shape on the left. And now you yeah. have the balance of the, the star and the circle on the right. Yes. Um, so yeah. I think this is going to be the final uh, project now. Fabulous. So I am going to maybe start working on this. <laughs> I, hope, I hope my hands are not too shaky. I'm a little oh, bit I'm sure nervous. you'll be fine. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be try trying my hardest <laughs> and my okay. best <laughs> to make this work. So um, also, yeah. I also already did a selection of the brushes that I'm going to be using. I like to keep the my favorites here. Yes. So you can see, um, yeah, I have, uh, I added some other, I bought some, um, but I'm also using some of the original um, fresco brushes. Yes. And since we're also doing I'm starting with the shape of the girl. So I also already have a selection of colors that I might want to be using, uh, which is this. But I like to reduce this, um, the amount of colors to maybe just five. So I'm going to be starting with maybe this um, very neutral skin color and going from there. I'm going to be building the rest of the, the colors from that part. Okay. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's see if my hand is not too shaky. <laughs> You'll be <Oops>. fine. <laughs> I think this is too much. Oh, yeah, so I'm painting in the wrong layer, of course. Uh, I do that all the time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a sketch layer and I suddenly start painting. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. I think I'm going to be moving this layer on top yeah. so that I can see yeah. better. And that's a good tip, actually. Tim in the chat is saying that uh, you could always just turn up the smoothing a tiny bit if you're worried about that. So just increase mm -hmm. the brush smoothing. That that works. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Sandrine's playing wrong layer bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, man, yeah. That happens to me all the time. I'm like, it, what's going on? <laughs> Why it am I not happens it? to all of us. It's all good. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, 
I really enjoy filling, I don't know, I mean, I'm like this. I really yeah. like filling out the layers, you know, by yeah. hand instead of just going, you know, with the fill yeah. layer. <sighs> I don't know. I, I think I just really enjoy the process of, of making the illustrations um, kind of old schoolish way. <laughs> Nothing wrong so, with that. Yeah. So... I'm going to fill out the arms now because the arms, I don't know what outfit she's going to be wearing yet. I might not be using the, the outfit she's wearing yep. in the image. I kind of like to, you know, play around with that a bit. So. Maybe she's going to have a t-shirt to here. Sandrine uh, in the chat is saying, Adobe should invent a technology that locks the layers with only the power of the mind. Oh, that would be wonderful, right? Like, Wouldn't it, maybe though? Just look at the layer and yeah. then it's the right layer. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Sean says we'd still find a way to complain about it. <laughs> I want to draw on that layer, not this one. <laughs> yeah. So this is the other hand. I think I'm going to be doing the fingers like this. I, mean, I don't know if you have the problem, but, you know, drawing hands, the struggle of it. <laughs> I've actually been, do you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of revisiting things that I think I know. Yeah. Yeah. And just trying to learn them from the ground up again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And bizarrely, I've actually been studying hands recently. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a series of books and somebody who was on, a friend of mine who was on, uh, who's been on Adobe Live quite a few times, David Cousins, a comic book artist. Mm -hmm. um, he is a fan of the same books and they're called Morpho. Mm -hmm. okay and there's a series of books i think it's oh, about think, yeah. eight or nine have you seen them they're small lay flat know. books yeah and uh, i've actually been looking at the ones on hands uh and seen some interesting approaches in mm -hmm. there that i perhaps haven't used before when i'm constructing hands because my method of construction is usually to create the basic hand shape as a block mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I create lines for the fingers and one from the thumb that's opposed mm -hmm. outwards. Yeah. And that's the way I do it. So basically this big shape and I've done it like that for ages, yeah. but I started revisiting it. And the morpho suggestion is that this area of the hand leading into the palm mm -hmm. is like a sort of a boomerang shape oh. just there. Yeah. If you look at that as being a boomerang, the main yeah. volume of the hand, then you've got this small branch of the thumb and then the fingers that extend away from the boomerang. I mean, that, that's the way I see it as a boomerang. You could also think of it as like an L shape, but it was an it's interesting, that... interesting method yeah. of construction. I really totally. liked it. But it... Totally. And yeah, I think I've been drawing hands the same way ever since I started the illustration. It's so, like, you know, you kind of have this, um, this shortcut somehow that you always use. I've noticed that um, also now that I've begun uh, studying to become an art teacher, yeah. I'm taking classes in, in art, you know, just in painting and stuff like that. Mm. And I've tried to veer away from, from doing like human shapes because I have just this, I always fall into the same shapes and forms somehow. Like I always do it the same way. Which is yep. nice in a way because I feel very comfortable doing it. But if I want to try something new, it's really hard. I <laughs> know, oh, but you can. You can. It's just a matter of making it a habit. It's that. That's the yeah. the thing. So if, yeah. if about four weeks ago, I decided that um, I need to spend more time sketching. Also, mm -hmm. I found a new uh, barber in London that I really like going to. Yeah, and um. So I've said that once a month, this month is kind of out because we're moving studios, but mm -hmm. once a month I am going to, on a Monday typically, I'm going to go to uh, London. I'm going to spend the day 
drawing in the British Museum. Mm-hmm. And then towards the end of the day, go and get my hair cut and my beard and a massage and then come home. And I think that will be a good way to reconnect. That sounds very world, nice. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. The, um, yes. Okay. So I think we already have like her shape done. So I'm going to be choosing her outfit. And I think... I might be going with, I mean, I can always change the color later on. So that's whatever. I'm just going to go with this blue now and then see what happens if I don't like it. And I think she's, I'm just going to put, how do you call this? Like an overall? No, like a dungaree. Coverall, coverall dungaree. Has it got straps? A dungaree. And like a bib and all of that yeah. stuff. The dungarees, yeah. Okay. It's a dungaree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she's going to be wearing it's I think um I really like wearing dungarees. Mm. <laughs> so it's I think we all uh, do. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. It's so comfortable and I think it's really nice for um wait, I'm going to move this layer. Okay, like this. Daryl's mm. saying that life drawing really changed the way he draws things. Life drawing's so so good a thing to do really mm. i have such a hard time uh, but is doing that, life drawing but is that because <laughs> right okay well i'm just i'm going to probe on this now i want i've got questions for you now <laughs> okay, okay is that because you're expecting your drawing technique to suddenly and instantaneously behave like a camera because that's that's kind of not i mean the, the, mm. it, you know, as in pushing towards like hyper realism or no, 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 or even no. a semi photographic representation. Yeah, no, that's not where you should be looking. I don't have an opinion. expectation of my yeah. of my work. I think when I I do live drawing, then I'm just you know just doing it the way that I would do a normal mm. illustration. I think mm. just make it quirky, make it a little bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here, here, right? You've got you've got quite long arms here, right? But what they're doing is they're conveying the motion that is going okay. on in that anatomical, you know, th- this is a thing that I think people, people, schools are terrible for mm-hmm. art tuition, yeah. right? They're really, really bad for you <laughs> because, you know, they lead you to this expectation of, That's of true. you know, of you think you're not good at it when you're a kid. Yeah. You draw a new color all the time yep. and you make people happy with the product of your drawing and coloring, including yourself until you get to school, until you're about sort of 12 or 13. And there are other people who are perhaps more accomplished in the representational side of things. Cause that's what they do. And you suddenly think, Oh, I'm not very good. Yeah. And it, it robs you, I think of totally. something that is important for your mental health, for your, you know, and so many other things. I've got loads of friends who are art teachers, you know, so if any of you are watching, I'm not dissing you completely <laughs> and you're wonderful, lovely, lovely people. But, yeah, I had this know. really sad experience, actually. I did my yeah. my first, um, how do you say, practicum, like um, the first time that I went teaching into a, to a school. Yeah, 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 practical teaching session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and there was this kid and he said, please teach, please, please, miss, don't look, don't look at my work. It's super horrible. And I was like, oh my God, like what, what is horrible? We were just trying out watercolors. Yeah. There's nothing you can do do wrong with that. You're just practicing. You're just trying. And I tried to convince him, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with the way he was doing it. It was just, I felt so bad for him that. I don't know the experience. I mean, he was like 11 or 12. I mean, the experience he must have had until then that he thought that everything he was doing was not good. I mean, I don't know. Just like you said, we, we go on, sorry. No, we do. We, we paint, we draw the whole time. We're just doing this the whole time. And then as a kid, I mean, I don't know. I just, just feel very sorry for him. I know it's 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 the thing, and it puts this enormous weight of expectation. Mm. I tried. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a qualified teacher of adults, mm-hmm. uh, so my qualification in that regard is in teaching adults in the lifelong mm-hmm. learning sector. Um, 
I tried teaching school kids. I did uh, I did a year's teaching experience with uh, year nine and ten mm-hmm. uh, students um, in the lead up to their exams, really the year tens. And we got on great, but I decided it wasn't for me. I just thought, no, nah. because they were placing these expectations on themselves. And I thought by this particular point, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of ingrained. But And there was one, I always remember there was one young woman and she had the most amazing pe- pencil rendering technique. She was like 14 and she had this incredible pencil rendering technique. And I asked her, if uh, if she was going to follow, you know, if she was going to carry on, if she was going to make this uh, her career, and she said, "No, I just want to work in Boots, which is a chain of chemists. <laughs> I've always wanted to work in a shop." And I thought, Man. "Wow, okay." I mean, <laughs> I guess everyone has their dreams. Well, I mean, she achieved her dream because I went into <laughs> it. Went into no, and did you see her? Years later, and she was there. <laughs> Uh-huh. And it kind of broke my heart a little bit, but you yeah. know, I just thought, oh, good. But you know, you never know, right? People go, we don't have right. the linear paths that we used to have to have in societies exactly. these days. You can do something for a very long time, and it's it's so easy to just change direction now. Yeah, totally. I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, I know a lot of people who have changed careers when they're forty or something. Yeah, I mean, it does happen. It's good, and you know, I think and it's you... really good. <laughs> you come to a new job with a load of different perspectives, you know, and even if you like leave the creative field and come back into the creative field, you've got other things that have gone on. It's just, you know, doing things that you don't usually do. That's when I think you become stagnant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's uh so, Oh, we've got Annika Argwell in the house. Hi. Good to see you here. <laughs> Let's just catch up on that. Uh <laughs> It's Sandrine saying it's a generation thing too. In our days, the 80s, going to art school was seen as a bit of failure unless you're a posh kid. Lots of wealthy oh. students when I was there. Oh man. Okay. I had to work, I had to work my way through Sandrine, as I suspect you did as well. The uh yeah, I wasn't one of the privileged uh people in the in fine art, but I left fine art so early as I've talked about on this stream before mm-hmm. and decided I wanted to go into graphics and illustration. Mm-hmm. But just switched over, hopped over to the other side of the faculty and just, I'm going to do graphics now. <laughs> yeah, when I when I was younger, I always want, I mean, I always loved art. I always wanted to do something artsy. But mm. my family was also like, you know, you know, you can't really live from doing art and stuff like that. And I kind of, I mean, I don't, it's not like I gave up on that dream either because yeah. it's not true. But um then i heard about illustration i was like oh my god what is that <laughs> i know is it exactly drawing what for money for? yeah <laughs> oh my god drawing for money i can't I know. Really do that oh so cool yeah i know come up they used to back in my so this is my 42nd year in the business wow congrats for thank you very much 42 years <laughs> 42 uh, you know i know the answer to everything no, everything yeah day? yeah douglas adams <laughs> it is actually yeah yeah and I, that's not lost on me i've, I've thought of that yes the um but yeah Wait, 42 years change. from uh, from when i first started out making <laughs> punk posters and all of that stuff i had a couple of breaks uh in that to do other things short breaks mm-hmm. uh here and there i went in the army for a while oh, okay. uh, i was a creative director then suddenly the army <laughs> How? <laughs> oh, it's a long story. Let's not go into oh, that. Wow. But uh, so uh, I was a, I was a reservist to start off with, and then did full time for a little while. After that, afterwards, so well, quite a while after that. The um, but yeah, it gave me a different perspective on things. Calmed me down a bit, actually. It was quite good. Uh, but yeah, forty two years, crazy. crazy, absolutely crazy. And oh I still God. like examining things and still, it was commercial art back when I first started. That's where I was going. I was trying to work, mm-hmm. find out where I actually branched off from that story, but it used to be called commercial art and uh, in the main. So you wanted to be a commercial artist. And even then there was the, I still got the Association of Illustrators survival handbook in here somewhere. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From 1984 or something like that. I think somewhere around about then. 
I'm just looking around, seeing if it's on one of these shelves. I don't think it is. I think it's probably in a box, but yeah. They used to do a good survival, uh, illustrate a survival kit. <laughs> Sean thinks I need a design ninja buff. I do, actually. That's not a bad idea. If I get some done, uh, Sean, would you purchase one? <laughs> and Sandrine said, it certainly was my parents saw it as a failure. Hmm. She said, unfortunately, both their kids became artists. Yes, pushback. Oh, my. <laughs> and that was the thing. It was always seen as like the soft option, despite the fact it's that so here in the weird. UK, yeah. it's our biggest export. This often surprises people. Wow. Okay. The biggest <laughs> export here in the UK is linked to creativity. Crazy. Yeah. We, a huge part of our economy. Yeah comes down to creativity whether that's in motion pictures and, and you know illustrate all of those yeah. things huge part of our economy linked to creativity so our biggest export i am told yeah, yeah being priced out of art supplies yeah should have done what uh what i did Sandrine. <laughs> art supplies Borrow yeah them. very expensive <laughs> i just purchased a lot of stuff that i needed <laughs> so it's so expensive <laughs> Oh. Yeah, Sandrine's a will draw for food. Jackie says, I wish I'd switched to illustration. Well, Jackie, dear, you are doing fantastically as you're doing. So you really are. And Oliver's saying, Tony's been in the business almost as long as I've been alive. Well, I've been in the business <laughs> longer than most of you have been alive. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> Easy. You know, oh, I was thinking about thanks, Douglas Kirsty. Adams right now. Yeah. He got the idea for the book here in Innsbruck, actually. Really? Mm hmm. I think it's so cool. <laughs> I can remember reading The Hitchhiker's Guide. I love that book. Oh, such a long time ago. And then they made it into a TV series that was so here in the UK it was so bad oh, no. that it was actually great oh no <laughs> <laughs> and then they made right? that they made There's that dreadful film bad. with with Martin Freeman and this yes. is what happens when marketing people get hold of an idea they kill it yeah <laughs> by saying oh well, don't you think it should be a bit more this or make the logo bigger or you know all of that malarkey yeah but no there was a fantastic honestly the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy back in the day Zaphod Beeblebrock's hat was like a like a almost like a glam rocker in, yeah. in appearance and eye patch. So cool. But uh yes. I <laughs> love that series so much. <laughs> yeah. Angus uh, said in the chat, Tony, the answer to everything, a career, do everything. Absolutely. This may be the only time you're here. You should use That's the time true. well. That is true. Tony also played the flugelhorn for Stevie Wonder's cousin. Tim, you're so funny. Count the keyboard. Oh. Is, it, is it right now? <laughs> or are you saying no, 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 no. He's just, no, no, it's just Jackie. So it's in the chat. I'm just I'm just reading. I'll take 10% of all design ninja buff sales. Well, we, we could work something out. Uh there, Sean, I'm sure. The uh <laughs> Sandrine says, I know what you did, and I did it too. Twinsies. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Jan's just asking, how long is Tony in the business now? 42 years. Yes. <laughs> Sean's saying 42, really. Make it bigger. 43. 42.5 designer nudge. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I am counting. I'm not counting the, the qualification time, uh, to be honest. I'm counting mm -hmm. the time from when I very first started, right, making punk posters before I was in education. So, well, you know, design education. Hmm. What layer am I on right now? No, which Ooh, is what layer am I on? <laughs> That's, that sounds like a song in the making. <laughs> it should be the correct layer, yes. Okay. <laughs> Huh. Let's go so good, isn't it? Yes. You know, I wish I had 
I don't know. I, I think I kind of always fall into the same um into Trap. the same patterns, yeah, uh -huh. somehow. No, but I took an online course with I think was it Molly Molly Aiken or something. And she yeah. has this uh, on Skillshare. It's just about from Adobe Fresco. Yeah. And it's so fun. She she shows you how to do portraits. It's really, really nice. Mm. I don't do so, too many Skillshare courses, the, mm -hmm. uh, but I do do, uh, so I'm an author on LinkedIn Learning, so of course I go there because for me it's free uh, to do all that stuff, as it is for anybody with LinkedIn Premium. Mm -hmm. But I have, I used to uh, do things on New Masters Academy, have you come across that one? No. That's a really, that's more with a fine art leaning, okay. uh, that is. There's some great stuff there on Perspective, which was a thing I was revisiting last oh, nice. year. Yeah. Um, Again, as I said to you, taking what I think I know and trying to look at it as if I know nothing and, and going through it. And it's kind of interesting yeah. to approach that. So there's that uh, 21 Draw. Have you seen any of the things on 21 Draw? Mm -mm. 21 Draw has some, have some good stuff on there. Um, and, of course, there's Domestica. Yeah, Domestica. Of, I love Domestica. Yeah. So They're a couple so of my friends... Cool have things on there tina tooley who's coming onto adobe live soon oh, i'm nice. so excited uh, to say and our very own natalie kutia uh, from the adobe live team she's mm -hmm. uh, she's got courses on there too oh nice or at least one course <laughs> jack he has done 31 years since i graduated in graphic design yes stuart nice. nearly 30 years Still learning every day. That's the key. 15 minutes learning every day for me, seven days a week. Even if I'm on holiday, I'll give mm. at least a quarter of an hour of my day to having a look at something and learning something new. Not necessarily always in the creative area, um, but learn something new. So my wife is always so appreciative of me coming in going, hey, watch this like I did the other day. <laughs> Just where do you find this stuff? What it was was a musical instrument originally devised by Benjamin Franklin made of glass bowls of different sizes and with wet hands you could play this oh. thing and get the most amazing you know like when you oh, make yes, a round of wine glass that. yeah 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 like that just bigger and with more range just incredible and I thought I'm gonna watch that now <laughs> I did and take it to my wife and go look at this and she's like, where do you find this stuff <laughs> you know Hey ho. What layer am I on? T-shirt merch. Oh, Angus, that's a good idea. That would make a great T-shirt. What layer am I on? What layer is it on? <laughs> no. One of those in my store by tomorrow. Oh, Kirsty's got to go. Bye, Kirsty. <laughs> Stuart's just signed up for a course on Domestica. After Effects 1. Cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, the courses there are just so oh, and after cool. Effects. Yeah. Uh, has anyone or Tony heard of masterclass courses? Any good? Oh, uh, I think the ones for writing I've heard are very good, apparently. Oh, yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, because I have them mm -hmm. for screenplay and all sorts. And Jackie has seen the same thing, the harmonica. Yes. I think that sort of uh, resource is really, really nice. Mm. because um i think i've had the i mean i've had the chance to just you know like you say learn more and kind of like delve deeper into certain parts of illustration i mean since i didn't i didn't study illustration either mm. so that sort of online course does help a lot to just you know develop your art a little bit more yeah learn more stuff it's nice that's good to do hmm Lifelong learning. <laughs> Lifelong learning, absolutely. I'm really not sure about the color scheme here. I'm going to probably be changing everything later on, but I'm just going to... Um, wrong layer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all good. Uh, by the way, just so you know, we've got uh, half an hour of natural time left nice so <laughs> you will probably not see this final illustration of this it's okay 
So what we can do, if yeah. uh, if you send uh, Tim will work that out with you afterwards. If you send us a copy, we can drop it on our Discord because we have our very Wonderful. own Discord server. And in fact, Tim will probably drop a link into the chat for that right now, along with your social stuff. Wonderful. Which would be really good. So Let's we can go to your site. Uh, I think is rachelcutsteller.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So I'm going to. I think this part is kind of like the quickest one anyway. Yeah. But just the geometric shapes. Fresco has some really, really fun tools actually to do it the. It does. It does absolutely. Um, to do these, the shapes really nicely. I'm mm. going to. Uh -huh. This is not good. Yeah. <laughs> I did oh, not close. The fill? <laughs> yeah, I did not close the. The fill found a gap. Yes. <laughs> I hate it when it happens. Yeah, Look, I know. Me it? too. Where is it? <laughs> yep. No, it's me still too. over there. Okay. Angus, um, by the way, 33 years since he last graduated in the arts. Fantastic. And Daryl's saying, I wonder if Adobe will ever produce a community drawing app where everyone can doodle together. Mm -hmm. Wow. That would be that a very... Insane. Yeah, that would be a huge... When you say everyone, if you mean like literally everyone, you imagine how what a challenge that would be with different time zones and True. servers working at the same time so that you weren't overwriting somebody else's work it's a bigger challenge than you might think and the thing is would we want it what about if you had an app where you could buy space or have space on a large illustration and contribute to it that might be cool so this tool i think is so fun <laughs> Oh, what the polygons and everything, yeah. the, the, like stamps and what have you. Yeah. yeah. No, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was not my intention. It's okay. So now this is right. Did you use the fill bucket or did you tap on it with the paintbrush? Which which did you do to get it? I think now I just tapped with the with uh, the pen on the background and then it turned uh, everything. Yes. That's funny, but not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the ruler, though. Yeah, the ruler's good. I mean, my illustrations are not always... I mean, I try to make them as unperfect as possible because perfection drives me crazy. Yeah. When I mean, I started uh, strategic design. I started to become a designer. And I'm a very, very bad designer, like very bad. And it just drove me crazy when things were not perfect. So with my illustration work, I make it not perfect on purpose so that I don't go crazy. Yes. That's the one of the funny things. Uh, so my first teacher, Irene, she used to have us ruling lines with a paintbrush you know, so you'd have to be able to hold your ruler at a slight angle just to the top of the, to the bottom of the ferrule and then try and draw lines of a consistent weight with a paintbrush. And so every now and then it'd be, today we're going to do lines. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Super great. Oh. And so you get to this point where, and you then did with the airbrush as well to create straight lines with that, which I found easier to nail than, than the paintbrush. The... Uh, but yeah, get to do that. And then you'd, you'd move across into the next class and they go, oh, no, those lines are too regular. <laughs> yeah. really, you know, you'd have to, oh, <laughs> what am I doing now? <laughs> what layer am I on? There were no layers then. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, Z is saying mm. everyone could have their own layer. They could. I guess that's kind of sort of possible anyway or now closed groups rather than the three for all yeah that would work imagine the layer naming oh yes it would have to be your name i think it would be work yeah but i want someone else's layer can we <laughs> name layers in fresco uh i think you can I, th I think you can yeah you can in the properties uh panel you can give layers a name uh in there i was just 
caught me on the hop for a minute. And thank you, Tim, for just confirming that in my ear to save me actually looking. <laughs> and just went, yes. <laughs> You're so aced, Tim. Yeah. Lay a name. It's mine. Don't touch. <laughs> and the file name, please don't delete. Yeah, that would be awkward. That would be the thing if somebody did a collaborative uh, document like that and then they changed their mind when you've already started working on it. You've done a load of work. The server goes to commit and this goes, file doesn't exist. Boof work stuff gone so all of these hazards that are potentials it's my layer and i'll do what i want with it <laughs> <laughs> nice so there's a gap somewhere i just can't find it <laughs> oh i know it's so easy though and it can be so teeny weeny yes it must have been really tiny because I did yeah. not find it. Mind you, you can always use that color margin thing and bring it up and down. Oh, yeah, so if cool. it is overfilling the layer, just bring the color margin down and that will change the tolerance. And what I really love about that is that it's so dynamic. It's not like the magic wand tool in Photoshop mm -hmm. where you have to do it, try it out, and then kind of go undo it and go back. The fact that it's so dynamic is lovely. How do you go about uh, establishing your color palette? I mean, I know you've got you've got a load of daubs of color that you work with and you choose from there, but do you have any sort of system or method? Do you use any tool for, for selecting colors? Mm -hmm. Good question, I think, right? So, yeah, I think what I like to do with the color is that I, I like to see what people are wearing. I like to see the colors outside. And then I just go with one color that I really, really like or that I'm feeling at the moment and yep. then just start matching it. For example, I was really feeling the blue yeah. somehow. And then I thought, oh, it might look nice with the brown. But then it was like, oh, but I really like this violet one. So it might look better with the orange one. Okay. And um, what I like to have is maybe like a cold color and then a warmer color and uh, some in-between colors. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's good for like contrast. Yeah, yes, yeah. Exactly. So I like to have the, yeah. yeah. That's usually my approach. And I do work with a very limited color palette yeah. because otherwise I think it gets too messy somehow. And um, yeah, I also don't like, for example, if a tree is, I mean, you know, usually trees are green. Yep. <laughs> Then I would like, I like to go with a maybe a green that you wouldn't expect, like a shade that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, normally. yeah, that's my approach to color usually. Another one of my friends in Barcelona, Maru Godas. I actually have her oh, book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know Maru? Yeah. Have you seen her? Yeah. So she she does some fantastic. Yes, uh, beautiful. Her work yeah. is so good. I'm taking her. I think uh, she has a. Uh, the, uh, do uh, domestic accord yeah i'm taking that one right now <laughs> is she? she's super i love her she's yes. super lovely her approach to color is wonderful mm -hmm. do you ever watch any of her instagram stories where she's just turned up at a beach and just starts drawing and no, actually painting she generally yeah. takes a double page of her sketchbook mm -hmm. so you're taking in the whole view that she's taking in she's just she's so so epic honestly i really do i love her to bits she's just great yeah her stuff is wonderful mm -hmm. so and angus is saying there's a great sense of movement in this composition thank you <laughs> i'd agree it's uh yeah, there is i'm glad you see it that way <laughs> This tool is just so much fun. <laughs> it is though, it's really... The only thing that I wish was added to this, which was in one of Fresco... Fresco is the result of several other apps, mm -hmm. which when Adobe first started moving into the mobile drawing mm -hmm. uh, arena, as it were, um, they... Uh, they tried a few different things out, starting with a with an application called Adobe Ideas. Then they made oh, uh, yeah. Adobe uh, Adobe uh, Sketch, uh, mm -hmm. Adobe Photoshop Sketch, and they did Adobe Illustrator Draw, and all of these different things. Experimented, but um, 
oh, I can't remember if it was Photoshop sketch or Illustrator draw, but one of them had French curves in oh. it. You know, like a set of French yeah. curves. Yeah, oh, so that would be very useful. It would be super useful. Yeah, that's true. In, in there, you know, it's the, and it's not a big ask, Adobe. Come on, <laughs> please give us give us presents. <laughs> I want the prezzies. <laughs> no, no. Oh, and Photoshop mix. Yeah, and saying, yeah, that's all part of the whole things. Photoshop fix, Photoshop mix, all of those things. And then, which of course now are in Photoshop Express, uh, part of the Creative Cloud Express family, I would guess, really, um, or the Express family. And uh, yeah, all of those things. And Photoshop, of course, on the iPad. Mm -hmm. yeah i wish it had more tools available photoshop it will get there or... i mean it's you know it's it, think about the opportunity it is for mm. the photoshop team though yeah you know because the desktop product has got tools for everybody in fact when, That's when true, i yeah. when i worked at adobe we used to have a running joke about saying are you a photographer a digital artist, an illustrator, an engineer, a medical radiographer, a stellar cartographer, yeah, <laughs> or a dentist. And <laughs> Photoshop is the application, or a 3D artist, Photoshop is the application for you. We'd have yeah. all of these different things because Photoshop has something or had something for, for all of those people at the mm -hmm. time. And as a result, you end up with application bloat. It becomes really, really big. Yeah, and you know, you, you can just do everything with it. <laughs> Yeah, and so it's. It, I think on the iPad, it's a great chance. Not only, and also its interface mm. is very much of the time where things yeah. like Fresco and Photoshop on the iPad they have interfaces that are based on the context in which you're doing something or using them, and so it's only showing you the things that are relevant at the time, rather than all of these panels everywhere. I think it's a great opportunity to to change that. Mm. They see, I really, really thought that was going to be a sort of a yellow that that pipe. <laughs> yeah, maybe surprise me. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're going to change that one up. No, don't not my not on my account. <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> yeah, I was actually the yellow that I have selected there. Yeah. Yes, big set. Sandrine agrees, by the way, that it would be great to have curves. And she remembers when Photoshop had everything. You know, this Sounds like Tony's here. CV. <laughs> sorry, say again. No, sorry. This yellow here is the one that I was thinking. Super bright, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's a neon. Yeah, it's neon. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, maybe when I finish the illustration, I might be playing with more, uh, with the colors a little bit yeah. more. Right now, I just want to get the shapes at least. Get the shapes in. Yeah. 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 At least that. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. We're doing okay. We've, we've still got over a quarter of an hour left. I mean, you've 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 jumped on in leaps and bounds, you know. But we had a lot of look at your work. We were talking about cats. You know, all of this stuff is good for everyone. And <laughs> Angus said that that list of occupations sounds like my CV. And Tim says, that's my line, Angus. <laughs> Oh man, CDs and DVDs, Sandrine. Those were the times, or the cassettes? <laughs> oh, well, cassettes, yeah. I was thinking about cassettes a few days ago. Were you? I was talking about cassettes on Saturday night in a pub <laughs> with some people I'd never met before. <laughs> Me and my wife were having a restaurant attached to a pub. We were having dinner, and there were a couple sat next to us, and we ended up talking to them, as you do. And this chap was describing what he did for a living. And uh, he starts talking about this machine. And he started talking about cassette tape. And I said, are you talking about a slitter rewinder? Now, that's not a common thing to know, right? A slitter rewinder. So basically, it takes a huge roll of something, cuts it into a predetermined set of predetermined widths, and then winds it onto something else. And it's how cassette tape was made from larger rolls of magnetic tape. And he said, yes, I am. And I said, did you work for Titan? Titan Converting Equipment? And he said, yes, I did. Oh, my. And uh, one of my part-time jobs, I used to drive a, a chauffeur. Oh, <laughs> they my. go, Tim, you can add that to the list. And, uh, yeah, I used to drive. And it's 
only that and talking to the people that I used to pick up sometimes some people didn't want to talk or didn't you know you only spoke if you were spoken to generally but some of them wanted to have a conversation so I found out these things and I learned what a slitter rewinder was it's crazy <laughs> so weird hmm okay so I think we have like the shapes yes no. Oh, I can hear some bird song. Yes, uh, my studio is in a, in, how do you call it? It's like in between apartment buildings. So it's uh, in a, in an Hof in Germany. Yeah, all oh, right, okay. Um, and we, yeah, we have really lovely trees here. And yeah. when the trees don't have that many leaves, then I have a straight view to the, to the mountains, which is very nice. I can see the snow sounds... in the winter. <laughs> uh, sounds lovely and really it invigorating. Oh, Jackie's asking, has Tony ever written down how many jobs he's had? Actually, <laughs> yes. And believe it or not, Jackie, at Creative Pro Week this year in Washington, I was trying to show an infographic timeline of the jobs I've had. Yeah, you can see the creative strand running through, but when you're freelance... People don't always pay you on time. You know, I'm sure we've all been there, right? We know Have you that. had that experience, Rachel? Yeah, yeah, we know the struggle. Right. So, you know, it's feast or famine. It's not uncommon for lots of illustrators mm -hmm. to have, I mean, it's. I think it is much, much easier these days, um, but it's not uncommon for illustrators to take other jobs uh, along, you yeah. know, alongside their career. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Um... Right, right before the COVID yeah. crisis, I was in a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a personal crisis with jobs and I was like, oh my God, I need to do something different. Mm. Because it was so, sometimes it's freelancing, it's just so hard on your nerves. Yeah. Because you just never know when the next job is going to come along. Yeah. And I was thinking I can't, I can't live with that insecurity anymore. So that's why I decided to begin studying again to have the uh, teacher training. The yep. teacher training. I did program. the same. Yeah. Yeah. So I could fill in with little bits of teaching. Exactly. Yeah. I, I haven't done that. I mean, I was I, I was a trainer for quite a number of years with mm -hmm. uh, Adobe Applications, but teaching, I think I stopped in two thousand and seven. I think around right, and then two thousand six, two thousand seven. I don't know, I could check that infographic and, <laughs> and tell, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sean says that's where Tony's love for pencils comes from. His days as a cassette rewinder. Hey, Sean, here's oh. a news flash. <laughs> here's a news flash for you. New pencils arrived today from Blackwing. Yeah, based on the golden section. So on the barrel of the pencil, they've got a Fibonacci sequence for color on there in which each bar, the width of each bar or the depth of each bar is the sum of the two bars previously. So good. So, so good. I'm a big fan. Do you Are you a fan of pencils, Rachel? Uh, sorry? <laughs> pencils? Do you like, like yes. actual pencils? Yes, I love it. I love I the smell of, of mm. pencils, of yes. HP pencils. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yep. I have, mm -hmm. and this is not an overestimation, I have thousands oh my of pencils goodness. in here. It's kind of helped by the fact I have a subscription to Blackwing, so I get, you know, another dozen pencils arrive every uh, every few weeks <laughs> to play with. Blackwing, yes, Annika. I think the smell of pencils reminds me of when I was a kid. My mom used to work as a secretary and she would always, I don't know, she would sometimes bring the pencils back home and yeah, just reminds me a lot of my childhood. Yes. Uh, and Jackie's asking, yes, you can get a subscription to Blackwing. It's called Blackwing Editions. So if you go to Black the Blackwing website, sign up for that. It's not terribly expensive even with international mailing 
and that way you get all of the new editions and you get special offers on the lab editions like blackwing red they're limited editions they only make so many of them and you get a chance to buy them so you've got them mm. Mm. tim says he only has an apple pencil <laughs> alamino is my favorite mm. Yes. I have. Oh, wow. Well, I've made movies about pen. I've got another one in the works. Movies about pencils. <laughs> I love them. I use them every day. As do you, I suspect. Yep. I mean, ever since I have the iPad, I like to sketch mostly on the ipad but i always need to do thumbnails beforehand mm. by hand it's really funny i don't know like the thumbnails always need to be by hand yep. and then the the advanced sketches i always uh, do them digitally do you use so i use much much thicker clutch pencils for thumbnails mm -hmm. so we're looking at leads that are maybe like four and a half millimeters Okay. Leads, so really chunky leads inside mm -hmm. of a clutch pencil. Oh, nice. My reason for using those is when you get, when you're drawing thumbnails, what you don't want to do is start doing detail drawing because there's that temptation to start adding details. Yeah. Yeah. And so I use that because it stops me from, from going, ooh, details. <laughs> that's, that's a good cheat, actually. Mm. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, but when I do the, um, thumbnails i always do them very quickly and i use mm. i love muji pens for that sort of thing mm. oh, i don't think i've got I'm any a big of those muji fan. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, writing that down <laughs> i shall gain more of that information from you uh, afterwards. <laughs> yes. i'm talking about information if i might just for a second um, and this one's for the community so we would like to know what kind of things you would like to see in the next season of live streams and seasons beyond that. Okay, because of course we take our little break after next week. There's no streams for a couple of weeks after next week while we all uh, take a breather and people get a chance to have a holiday. Um, and I get a chance to tell Tim what a holiday actually means because he's just like <laughs> here all the time. And, uh, and, and he could do with a holiday, it's a good thing. Um, anyway, we want to know and pop it onto the Discord, yeah? That's where we'll be looking for your suggestions. And that can be particular types of stream. Yeah. What sort of streams you want to see, or it might be particular guests you would like to see, you know, those kind of things. We are listening is I guess what I'm trying to say uh, here. So please give us your suggestions. And once again, uh, our discord, Tim has just popped that into the chat. If you're not seeing the chat, chances are you're on YouTube. So pop across to behance.net slash Adobe Live and grab that while the chat is still there. Ah, Muji gel pens are cheap and great. Oh, actually, I might have some of those, you know, thinking about it. I'll have to have a look. Yeah, Nature really photography, like yeah. That would be a good one to have on. In fact, we had, was it Rachel Miller? Uh, no, that's the sign writer. Um, I'm sure we had someone on uh, recently. Well, we did because I was here, but uh, can't recall the name off the top of my head. Thin mechanical pencils. Yes, loads of those. They're very handy. Wow, loving those textures. Yeah, I really Again. like They're giving the, the way motion. That's... Yeah. Is that yeah. a rake? I missed it. Did you go across some of the rake? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used the rake here, this one. Yeah. The I do like rake. a rake. Mm. I think yes. it just makes it look so nice. Mm. I quite often build background textures that way. I fill it with a solid colour mm -hmm. and then I scratch away parts of it with a rake. I oh, like yeah. to, to do that. Mm -hmm. It gives good texture. It's very nice. Too. Mm. Well, it's because back in the day, you could actually do that <laughs> with a series of blades that should drag them across or a comb, all sorts of things. And in the chat, Angus saying, ooh, nice textures. Rachel Hannah, thanks, Oliver. That's who we I knew it was a Rachel. <laughs> Rachels are the best. <laughs> a lot of cool Rachels out there, hey. There are. <laughs> I 
Yes. Sandrine recently discovered the Brea brushes, which are very nice texture boosters. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Can't beat a Brea. Yeah. And rollers. <laughs> rollers are good for texture. Lino rollers. To get a roller for lino printing, sheet of glass or a gel pad. Yeah. Get some ink, roll it off, rub some away on a bit of a bit of uh, newsprint or something like that, which you can buy in pads, very inexpensive. Yeah, I actually have some here. Some oh, cool. As, as actual there. digital textures. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, from Kyle. Mm. Kyle's coming back as well. Kyle's going to do another stream here, just so you know. Yeah. That's good. Oh, right. Okay, good. That's the good stuff. Yes. I like it. You know, great ways to build. Uh, I I still use newsprint a lot of the time for, for roughing mm -hmm. stuff out. Newsprint's great paper. Yeah, this is a, a picture of the Alps, actually. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's the snow. We went on a short trip to see the the glacier. Yeah. And that's the picture of the glacier. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The picture didn't turn out very well, <laughs> but the texture is very nice. <laughs> do you do you find yourself photographing textures all the time, like looking for different things? Yeah. I found a pile of bricks the other day. I don't know how well oh, that's coming across. It's yeah. so small. But I just thought, ooh. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I, I like relate. Them. I can understand yeah. that. Does Carl have lino brushes, like lino effect? I'm not sure, uh, Sandrine. He has so many thousands and thousands of brushes. Uh, I think Retro Art Supply do. If you can't find one there, Retro Art Supply. Oh yeah, I mean, one of some of the brushes are from Retro Art the Supply. Brushes that I'm using yeah. now. Really good, so. Justin. And yeah, yeah. A Dustin rather. Hmm. Maybe I'm going to be leaving this for really... Whoops, sorry. Okay. <laughs> and so just two or three minutes left. Okay. But this is get... no, 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 no. It's all good. I mean, we can probably we can probably squeeze out another five or ten minutes if you want it. So it's not as, a problem. As you want, as you prefer. No, no, it's entirely up to you. I mean, if you. Want. <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm going to be finishing this illustration anyway, so <laughs> you can oh, well, I guess so while I work on it. Tim will or... whisper in my ear if we can't have an additional 10 minutes, I'm sure, but okay. uh, I think he'll just say it's fine. Okay. Then, I think I'm going to use the texture yeah. for this one. Here. And Angus is a nice. texture photographer as well. Mm. Yeah, and Sandrine also got some from Retro Art. Yep. Brush hoarder. <laughs> I I keep buying Maddie Bellwars brushes. I like Maddie Bellwars brushes. Have you seen Maddie Bell, Bell, Bellwars? No. Mm -mm. Yeah, she makes some real cool brushes. She'll be streaming this afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. She streams on a Wednesday afternoon. And I think she does another one. I can't remember what day it's on. But... Uh, Sandrine said, can we have some lettering artists in the next lives? Yeah. Pop them into Discord, though, uh, Sandrine. That's where the team uh, will see them. If you don't mind, just pop the pop that uh, request into the Discord. I mean, I, it, I will remember it for our next team meeting. Um, but yeah, Annika's saying that Maddie's streaming. Maddie's live right now. Oh, there you go. Of course. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, when is the Adobe UK break, by the way? August. It's next week. So uh, there will be streams uh, next week, and then we're off for two weeks. Mm. And I think, I'm not, not entirely sure, uh, perhaps Tim will whisper in my ear, is it our game show next week, Tim? No. Okay. Uh, we had that one hand letter from Scotland a while back. Yeah, that was, uh, that was another Rachel. <laughs> um, that was... And it was a great stream. Yes, yes. Yeah, so lettering artists, more illustrators. Yeah, again, pop these into the Discord so that uh, so that they can they can watch out for them. And perhaps maybe we should create some sort of hashtag. Um, maybe hashtag my suggestion would work. 
something like that. Let's go with that. Or stream suggestion. There you go. We even know what it is. So just do hashtags. I'm I'm, I'm making this up on the on the fly. <laughs> All right. So hashtag stream suggestion. That will make it easier for people to find. Do it. So Rachel's Rachel's everywhere. Yes. <laughs> so have you got lots of work for the rest of the day have you got plenty of other things to be working on um yeah well i'm still waiting on feedback for my next book which is ah. coming out next year so wow. today is pretty much a free afternoon to finish this illustration <laughs> oh that's cool yeah <laughs> Yeah, Ooh. but I think I'm liking it. This is like nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it looks fun. Maybe it's was... missing some. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely fun. <laughs> Maybe. We still need some more texture here. A lot of texture everywhere. <laughs> Jackie's saying, this looks great, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, Sandrine's asking about the uh, Adobe UK Insta account now. Uh, don't know. Marco in the chat saying, wow. <laughs> Sandrine's loving the black lines. Mm -hmm. I think they're very, very close to, or rather, I see, I can see things on two different screens. They look slightly <laughs> less black on another screen. They look more, yeah. It's more blue. Plum. Yeah. yeah. Not outlines, just gracefully added. They are, and they add a little bit of extra mm -hmm. information. I like the eyes yet. I think I'm going to be adding that later on. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll just give it about five more minutes and then you okay. can work on. Mm -hmm. uh, how does Rachel have that pop out bit, color brush, etc.? Have you got that map to your kit, to your pencil, to your Apple pencil to tap it? And what? show the color. So when the color panel's popping up, mm -hmm. are you tapping your pencil to get the color panel up, or just clicking on the? I'm just clicking on it. Yeah, just tapping on there. Yeah. 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 If that's the bit you mean, uh, Jackie. Angus is saying it's great to see artist workflows like this. It is. <laughs> it's really strange sharing it. <laughs> so tomorrow is your how many years skate bursary? Six years. Six years. Yes. It's a long time for someone who skates as badly as I do, but you know. <laughs> Have you managed to escape largely <laughs> unscathed though? I hope hopefully you've not had anything too Actually, terrible. Actually, I did. I have not. I I broke my toe last year. How did you? <laughs> yes. That hurts. It hurts a lot. Yeah. I, 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 I've done it. <laughs> it's the worst thing ever. Yeah. Like my large toe, my right foot. Yeah. That was not fun. Uh, yeah. And it takes a lot toes. to heal. Mm, it which does. Which is very annoying. And there's not a lot they can do. Just strap them together, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's super annoying. <laughs> yeah, I mine was... was in the military. I didn't mind. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was very annoyed at myself that I managed because it was actually also on a very stupid date. It was like the 30th of December. Yeah, oh, right. That's so, a, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, way to welcome the new year. <laughs> yeah. And I was back home visiting my family so that also meant that i could like really do nothing 
the whole five weeks I was there. <laughs> I can I can relate. <laughs> Makes you feel really silly. <laughs> well, I mean, that doesn't sound. That's not too bad, though. You know, that's not too bad. I'm glad you've not been had anything more no. terrible than that. You know. So no, that's... I mean, Dad, and I had a concussion. Yeah. That was not. I, I, I also I did not know that I had gotten a concussion. I noticed like one week later. <laughs> right. All oh, right. Okay. But you <laughs> yeah. you had all of that checked out. Yeah, you had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah, like the doctor was like, oh, yeah, you had a concussion. I was like, what? <laughs> For a week now? <laughs> Is this going to get better? I was just having a lot of, um, like, motion sickness and just feeling um, like I was having problems seeing light. So, like, looking at the screen was very annoying. But, yeah. I mean, it comes with the with the sport, right? <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah. yeah. Uh, Angus is saying he. Ooh, actually, I'm not going to read it out because Angus, <laughs> Angus, Angus, Angus was much worse. <laughs> oh no! You have to tell me later on. I want to yeah. know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's got the word pins in it, so. Let's, <laughs> oh, okay. It's like oof, that does ouch. not sound very nice. Ouchy. <laughs> hmm. Man, I've had so many breaks. And really? Yeah. Oh, we could no. work up. We could almost all on my left side. We could work what? our way up from my toes. So three on the left foot. Uh, broke my left leg uh, as well. How did you? Broke my left wrist five times. Ouch. So that's due to start hurting anytime soon. The uh, yeah has. Oh, crazy. In fact, we'll discontinue that particular conversation. <laughs> okay, let's not go there. Right now. Yes. <laughs> but no, right the way down to my fingers. I think, oh, man, crazy. Yep. Angus said the leg was worse, though. Channel 4 logo. Ooh. Mine seems to be on the right side. <gasps> Angus, we're secret twins. <laughs> You're the other half of my power decoder ring. <laughs> So I switched to color and I think I'm enjoying it a lot more now. Mm. It's nice. I think the pants are looking better this way. Isn't that the beautiful thing about this is that you can suddenly switch across maybe just even if you put a hue saturation in, yeah. scribble away, you know, it's good yeah. stuff. It makes such a huge difference. Mm. I think for now, though, we are going to have to start wrapping up mm-hmm. for today's stream. So, uh, yeah, if you send this across to Tim, Tim will... Well, Drop too. it in the Discord because I'm giving Tim work to do, uh, which is kind. <laughs> <which is> <laughs> but no, it's been lovely spending this time with you. I hope that we meet in person at yeah, some point. Yeah, thank that you so much really for grand. having me here. Oh, it's been <laughs> great having you here. Really, really enjoyed it. And I'm sure everybody else has too. And this is wonderful piece of work. Thank you for doing that along with us and sharing so many different things with us. So fantastic. <laughs> thank you, thank Rachel, you, thank so you. much. <laughs> and thank you so much, lovely community, for joining us again. Uh, Sandrine said this was really enjoyable to watch. Angus is saying thank you so much. Great stream. Uh, Sandrine saying great stream. Doris is saying looks great. Thanks, Rachel and Tony, for the stream. Oh, Jack has enjoyed everyone. it. Great. Thanks, Rachel and Tony, says Oliver. Looks great. Love the stream, says Mike. There we go. So, yeah, oh, that's pretty thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, everyone enjoyed it. So don't forget, pop those suggestions for what you'd like to see on future streams for the next season of Adobe Live UK <laughs> on Behance and uh, on our Discord. We'll see you there. But from Rachel and myself, for now, it's cheerio. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs> Take care now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>